on, everybody? Welcome to Zone Defense. I'm Chris, joined by my co-hosts, Ryan and Drew. Be sure to follow us on Spotify at Zone Defense Podcast, on Instagram at Zone Defense Podcast, on Twitter at Zone Defense Pod, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Zone Defense Podcast. And be sure to ring that bell to get post notifications. Today we're doing a uh, a really interesting draft, and it's it's going to be the NFL Offensive Skill Position Players. I'm really excited for this one. Uh, Drew's got the first pick in this draft, followed by me and then Ryan. And uh, I'm really excited to break this down. So we're doing two quarterbacks, two running backs, and then four wide receivers. But you can also draft a tight end or two, you know, in the spots for the wide receiver position. Um, if you guys are ready to start this off, uh, Drew, why don't you go ahead and start it? Yeah, I'm ready to go. Uh, I've been really, really looking forward to doing this uh, the last few weeks. I'm glad we're finally able to do it. Um, so I had the first overall pick. I feel like I'm kind of at a disadvantage um, because there's just a lot of good players, but it's kind of hard to find that one really good player. So my strategy going into this was uh, wide receiver. Obviously, we have the most amount of people uh, that we need at the wide receiver position with four. Uh, and I feel like – I know Chris is probably going to disagree with me when I say this, but I feel like the drop-off – in terms of wide receivers is a little bit steeper in comparison to like the one to two for running backs and the number one to two guys for quarterbacks. It's not by much, but I feel like it's a little bit more. Um, And this guy that I'm going to end up taking, he was hands down the best receiver last year. uh, Again, on one of the best teams in the league, headed into 2020 at least. Um, A little, some kind of concern about the quarterback, but I really think he's going to have another really good record-breaking year. And that's going to be wide receiver Michael Thomas of the New Orleans Saints. That's a really interesting pick. Uh, he was definitely in my discussion for my first pick uh, just because he's just I, – I kind of agree that there is a drop-off, but I think there's a few receivers up in that category, and he isn't my my top receiver in the league. But in this draft, you know, a, a guy you want as a target hog, he's a wide receiver one, he might be my go-to guy for this. So that's a good pick. I'm surprised you didn't go quarterback there, Drew. Uh, you got to have somebody get the ball to your receivers. So there's a guy I'm looking at. I don't think Chris is going to end up taking him, but uh, hopefully he can follow me. So I, I agree, and when we first, when I first went out, I had the first overall pick. That was the guy. I'm like, okay, he's, I'm going to take him. But I just feel like there's another guy that I kind of like a lot too, and I feel like he'll probably drop to me when I get my next pick here, four picks later. So hopefully, hopefully that works out. But it's just, uh, it's just a strategy game at this point. So, um, you know, I, I didn't really strategize, but I was kind of trying to react to Drew's pick here because I really wasn't sure he was going to pick at all. You know, there's three guys in consideration for the first pick in the draft. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and spoil Ryan. I'm going to take Patrick Mahomes, my first pick, uh, you know, clear cut quarterback one for me. I don't really think it's that close either. He just in any offense, you can just kind of build build Mahomes around any offense. You know, he's just uh, he's a beast flat out and he's got a cannon for an arm. You know, it would have been nice seeing him throw to Michael Thomas, but that ain't, that isn't going to happen at all. But you know, there's going to be some receivers. I get him to ball to for sure. Thanks for that, Chris. Uh, going to have to, That's tough, man. Yeah. Tough. I mean, you got back to back picks here. So I'm excited to see what you do with that. Yeah. So um, with my first pick, uh, I'm going to break into the running back category here. I'm going to take the uh, best overall running back in the league right now. I'm going to take uh, CMC Christian McCaffrey. Yep, yes. I, you're gonna go there. It's a good pick for sure. Yeah, he's a he's a beast, obviously, and a, another guy you can kind of build your offense around. Uh, just the centerpiece there. Yeah, McCaffrey. I mean, I didn't really get to talk about Mahomes because there's really nothing to be said about Mahomes because he's the best quarterback in the league easily. Obviously, the injury is a little bit concerning, but it's probably just a kind of a, a bump in the road. Last year, he won the Super Bowl MVP, so he's fine. But McCaffrey, yeah. he was he was also my top running back on the board. Um, a little concerning there with Teddy Bridgewater, uh, but he's probably still a quality quarterback. So, yeah, I mean, he was playing right. quarterbacks last year. I wouldn't really be concerned at all with Bridgewater. If anything, I think that's an, an upgrade for him in terms of the offense. I don't think he'll see quite as many stack boxes. He should get plenty of uh, plenty of receptions because you know Teddy Bridgewater has that label of just being a check down artist and kind of a guy that throws it short a lot. So McCaffrey and and he thrives in that role. You know, he's a very good receiver out of the backfield, and his yards per catch aren't even that crazy. But he's got such good hands. You know, he's the guy that can get you eight, nine yards, and he can even break off a big play every once in a while in the receiving game, even though he gets the ball at the line of scrimmage. So I really like that pick, you know, just a real a foundational piece right there. I'm upset you took him. I was really close to taking him with my pick. Yeah, that's, that's a good point, Chris. I forgot. Uh, Teddy Bridgewater is definitely an upgrade from Kyle Allen. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't take much. Right. Yeah. All right, so I got another back. I got uh, my second pick here back-to-back. I could stack up on running backs, but uh, I don't know if that's the move. I'm going to go wide receiver here. I'm going to take uh, 
D Hop, I think he's got the best hands in the league. I still think he's one of the top three wide receivers in this league, and I, I really like him as my wide receiver one. Yeah, uh, you know, Hopkins, another another guy that can kind of just build with anybody. You know, not really a specialist in any way. He's just kind of a really all around guy. That's what I kind of like him more than Michael Thomas in certain ways, just because he's he's so good at route running. He's such a he's got great after the catch. You know, that spin move he had against Dallas a couple years ago was incredible. That's just one of the many play highlight plays he makes, and I think he has a a better spec catch rating. You know, uh, just Michael Thomas has got the crazy hands and the short route running. That's probably all he's got over Hopkins, but. You know, another really good receiver there. I, I'm, I'm sad you took him because that was going to be my next receiver off the board. Yeah, Hopkins. Um, he's obviously one of my favorite players. I got his jersey right behind me. Um, but big concern with him though is I think the skill's still there. I'm just a little worried because he's in Arizona now. Uh, they got a lot of really good options there, and Kyler Murray's still like young quarterback. And especially considering this year with all of the uh, problems with like off season, like the off season's very, a lot different than it was last year. So that's why he kind of dropped down my board a little bit. But if you're looking just from a pure talent per, ta talent perspective, I completely agree with you, Chris. He's probably the best receiver in the league. But a few concerns yeah, there right. with being on a new team, but still a really good pick. He was actually number three on my board for wide receivers. All right. And, you know, I'm, I'm not going to stop this wide receiver run. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take who I actually believe is the best receiver in the NFL. And I think he has the worst quarterback of the three main guys. I'm going to go with Julio Jones here. Uh, I just really think he's just a he's a tank down the field. You know, I think he's the best deep threat of the three of these guys. And to pair him with Mahomes just means a lot of deep balls, a lot more touchdowns on, you know, big plays. I, I know him and Matt Ryan haven't always had the greatest connection in terms of touchdown scoring. But I think him, him and Mahomes pairing together would just be incredible to watch. I think Julio is the most complete receiver in football. I think he uh, I think people underrate him in terms of an like an all time perspective. I think he's up in the top 15 of all time receivers. I think he will be easily in the top 10 when it's all said and done. Just incredible player. Ryan, what do you think about this pick before I kind of jump in? I want to see uh, where, Like where Chris said, uh, there are some red zone concerns there. I don't know if that all falls on Matt Ryan. I think the fact that I think he's it does. Not, I don't know. I mean, the fact that he's not catching touchdowns is a little alarming with his size and his, uh, you know, body control. I mean, I think he should – when you get down there, you should just throw it down the, and let him go up and make a play. But, you know, that hasn't been the case. So that's a little concerning to me, but – I think he's a, he's a complete package, like Chris said. That's a good pick. Yeah, I mean, he's also got some injury concerns, and he's he's not young anymore. He's, he's getting up there in age a little bit. Um, yeah. And, I mean, there's definitely some concerns there. I mean, you look at last year, though. I mean, he still had uh, almost 1,400 uh, reception yards, but uh, only six reception touchdowns, which isn't isn't great. Uh, the red zone's definitely a concern. Um, and I actually had him fifth on my board for wide receivers. He was a lot <laughs> lower. He was not the guy I thought you were going to take at this position uh, for your first wide receiver. So uh, a little, I'm, I'm going to be honest, I'm pretty surprised you took him because it's just like the age and the injury concerns are definitely concerning for me. So Yeah, that's definitely true. I just really think – I think he's still got a few years left of just pure dominance. And, you know, with the, the rest of the receivers I have higher on my big board, uh, I really, I'm really hoping this guy gets a couple – there's a, two guys I really want to get back to me. I'm hoping you don't take him so I can kind of, you know, maybe defend this pick a little bit more with my next selection. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'll jump into my, what is it, sixth overall pick, uh, my second pick for uh, the draft. And uh, going into this, I was thinking I was going to take quarterback running back. Um, and I'm definitely going to take a quarterback here. Um, so I'll just get that out of the way. Uh, I'm taking Russell Wilson, quarterback from the Seattle Seahawks. Um, he was the guy I kind of alluded to. I think he's one of the best players in, in the league. Um, and you just look at some of these teams that he's dragged to the uh, playoffs these last few years. I think he's going to do the same thing uh, this year. Um, just Really good runner, good thrower, good leader, um, and I'm really happy that he fell to me because this is the guy I was really hoping that fell to me for this sixth overall pick, and I'm glad he's still here. Yeah, that's a uh, – obviously, I think that's a clear-cut second quarterback in the uh, board. He was actually third on my big board, but now that I think of it, he definitely moved up to second over this other guy, which I'm assuming Ryan will probably take him, but we'll see. Uh, you know, Wilson, just a complete package as a player. Uh, I really would love to see uh, Russell Wilson and Michael Thomas. I feel like that would be crazy. One of the more accurate – kind of a similar – Accuracy rating by Drew Brees, in my opinion. I think they're both very accurate quarterbacks. Throwing to Michael Thomas is always uh, incredible. But I think Wilson takes more deep shots. I'd want to see if Michael Thomas is actually be more of a deep threat in this offense. So that's, a, that's an interesting pick for sure. Yeah, you talk about two of the most successful shorter quarterbacks in the league. I mean, the first two that come to mind are Drew Brees and uh, Russell Wilson. I mean, his, oh, yeah, his ability just to carry the Seahawks into the playoffs year after year, especially after that Legion of Boom dissolved and a lot. He lost a lot of his offensive weapons. I mean, it's been really incredible. I think he'll end up in the Hall of Fame someday. So it was a good pick. 
Yeah, that's for sure. I agree. Um, let's hear what your uh, second pick is. Yes. Yeah, so, Chris, you mentioned it. Uh, Russell Wilson likes to throw the deep ball sometimes. And uh, with this next pick, I'm going to probably take maybe the best uh, deep threat guy in the league. We saw it firsthand there in the uh, Super Bowl this past season. Uh, I know it's one of Chris's personal favorite players, and he's freaking out right now. I'm taking Tyreek Hill of the Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, no. Oh, no. I mean, um, obviously, there are definitely some off the field concerns with him. Um, and he's not, he's also not super young anymore, but he was actually the second receiver on my board. Um, and I mean, he's, as long as he can stay on the field, I think he's an elite deep threat option, uh, super fast. Um, and yeah, obviously off field, off the field concerns, but I feel like Wilson's a good leader and I feel like he can kind of help him kind of stay on the right track and hopefully be a really good wide receiver too. I was actually going to go running back, but it's, it's a, it's a passing league now. So I wanted to get another good wide receiver. Uh, man. Uh, wow. That sucks. That's a good pick. I am heartbroken. I was hoping I could get Tyreek Hill. I should have taken him first. I probably could have gotten Julio coming back around, but I thought so. I thought you were going to pair Julio with MT if I didn't take him. So I am, yeah, I'm pretty devastated right now. And having him as a wide receiver, too, is pretty incredible. Chris, you had him as uh, – you said you might pick, put him as your wide receiver one last week. Is uh, Was that the case, or did you have someone ahead of him? Uh, who, who are you talking about? Tyreek Hill. I remember you saying that you might put him as your be uh, best wide receiver in the league. Oh, I don't, I don't, I don't remember saying that. I, he's like my fourth, the fourth guy on my actual board. Maybe I did say that, but you he, did say that because when I when I made my Michael Thomas pick and I said I don't think Chris is gonna like this, it's because I remember you saying you liked Hill more than he was like the best quarterback. And I think I believe I might be misquoting here, but I'm pretty sure you said if I had the first overall pick, I would take Tyreek Hill. Yeah, I'm I not think, sure. I think you're right. Maybe I should have taken Tyreek Hill. <laughs> <laughs> I, I might have said something like that. I, I'm I'm not sure exactly if I did or not, but I probably did. I, I'm not sure. Ah, it's, uh, man, yeah. man I'm right now. I think it's kind of maybe throw a little more salt in the wound here, Chris. Um, Julio Jones definitely would have still been available there for you with this pick. <laughs> I was not going to take him at all. So, Tyreek Hill was, like, probably the top receiver for me off the board. I just <laughs> Julio would go first. Oh, my goodness. I have made a, a huge mistake here. And I, I am just absolutely devastated. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess I'll get my uh, I guess I'll get my running back off the board. I'm gonna take Saquon Barkley. This was my I mean my next pick. You know he's just uh, I'd argue he he might be more valuable than Christian McCaffrey in a league like this. That he's a, he's a little bit younger. Uh, I feel like he has more of an all around skill set in my opinion in terms of like a pure runner. I think he is the better runner of these two. McCaffrey obviously a better pass pass catcher. No debating there. But Barkley is no slouch in that department as well. But you know. Barkley's just an absolute monster in terms of just what, what he can do with the ball in his hand at the line of scrimmage. And he had such a bad offensive line last year. You're still able to see so many Barkley plays, you know, where he's just absolutely juking guys out of their shoes and stuff. I don't see that quite from Christian McCaffrey, but I definitely understand taking him first. I probably would have as well, just with his ability to catch passes and kind of do that a little bit better than Barkley. Yeah, it would have been nice to uh, pair Barkley with CMC, but uh, like Drew said, it's more of a – passing league now so that's a good pick though chris yeah i'm, yeah. I'm devastated i lost this draft the, the, only, the only concern with barkley <laughs> you're not yeah it's not it's we're not even halfway through yet yeah. the only concern with barkley <laughs> is i mean he definitely had a lot of injuries last year um and also just the the daniel jones question mark um when you look at some of these other backs uh they got i mean i know i kind of trashed teddy bridgewater when you when ryan took mccaffrey but <laughs> Uh, Daniel Jones is, is still kind of an unknown for the most part, so that's a little bit of a concern. But uh, I still think Barkley's a, a, a absolute beast, and he was the second guy on my board, too. I feel like a lot of these running backs have some question marks, at least. So good pick. I see pairing him with Mahomes in the backfield would just be an absolutely dangerous path. And I love, Mahomes underratedly throws to the running back a lot. I know he doesn't check it down quite as much, but when he had Kareem Hunt, you know, he's throwing it a ton to him. And even uh, – even Damian Williams, you know, he checks it down, but uh, neither one of them is even close to as good of a pass catcher as Barkley. For me. I think he might be the second best pass catching, like all around back. You know, James White probably is a little bit better, but he isn't the same runner. But Barkley is just an all around back. Is just he's incredible, and yeah, I think he's got the physical tools to be just dynamic in this offense with Mahomes. I I mentioned Barkley. He was hurt a lot, and he was still he was eleventh overall in running back reception yards. So that's pretty impressive that he missed that much amount of time and yeah, was still almost right. in the top ten. So good pick. All right. Back. So with my next pick, um, my second back pick, first pick, I'm gonna go to Green Bay here. I'm gonna take a fluid route runner. I'm gonna take Devontae <sighs> Adams. Ah, uh, that was gonna be my next pick, man. Yeah, that was that was. I was hoping he dropped. I thought people maybe forgot about him. So 
Excellent pick there, Ryan. Ah, thank you. This has been a disaster so far. He, I guess I, I hate to be like the negative Nancy of this group, but the only problem, I mean, all these guys have issues, but the only problem with him though is there is some drama there with the quarterback position and with Aaron Rodgers, um, which I'm sure we'll probably go into in depthly for our NFC North preview. Um, and also he's really the only option there in Green Bay. So you worry about maybe some double team, stuff like that. But he no, was number he four. He was number four on my on my board. So me too. He was really good. <sighs> really good pick yeah, there. Yeah. And you got I mean you got DeAndre Hopkins and Devontae Adams. I mean, that's a really good Honestly, yeah, I just, you got you got Michael Thomas and Tyree Kill, so I don't right, know. I don't know. I have Julio Jones. Oh. If I'm being honest, I kind of like Ryan's team a little bit more than mine. Chris, I'm, Ooh, I'm sorry. Oh. I'm sorry, but all right, let's get let's jump in here to. Uh, wait, any, any anything else with Devontae Adams, or are we ready to to move on? Uh, probably the best red zone threat on this list so far. You know, he's just incredible down down inside the twenty. And whoever I don't know who you're going to take a quarterback yet. I'm excited to see who that is. I'm maybe you'll take him with your next pick. Uh, hopefully he can throw. Hopefully he throws a lot of touchdowns to Adams. I know you mentioned uh, the quarterback drama. I really think that's that just yeah completely on Aaron Rodgers there. I think Adams is a complete receiver that can play with any quarterback, and he's very hard to double team. He's just so good in the red zone. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Uh, I think I almost have to go quarterback here with my next pick. Uh, I think I'm going to take the the reigning MVP man. Thirty six touchdowns last year, kind of yeah. like. Threat on both sides of the ball, dual threat. I mean, I know it's not matters as much on like a seven on seven, but I think you know, I think he's a great player. So I'm gonna take uh, Lamar Jackson. Yeah, um, that's that's a good pick. Uh, Lamar was definitely. I was thinking about taking him with my last pick and just having him run a bunch of crazy stuff. You know, he's such a he's just such a Swiss Army knife at quarterback. He can really do anything. He could be a running back. I know. I know people were criticizing for being a running back when he got drafted, but you know, he he's just. He, it honestly shouldn't be an insult because of how good he is in that regard. And I know, yeah, it doesn't matter as much in in this kind of uh, in this kind of draft, but I still value his ability to run a ton and you know make plays happen with his leg. Yeah, I, I agree. He was uh, he was number four on my board. I actually had one guy above him, oh, but wow. uh, Lamar. We I mean we kind of talked about it a little bit. Chris and I did when we did our quarterback ranking uh, episode. But uh, I, I am a little bit worried there about Lamar. Maybe have a some regression this year because of how good he was last year, um, and I feel like defenses might kind of adapt to him. But uh, I, I still think he's a good player and still a, a very high quality quarterback one for Ryan's team for sure. That's a, that's a really good pick. Uh, I if I would have gone Mahomes and would have waited for my next pick, I would have taken Lamar for sure. He was definitely my core. He was actually my quarterback too on my list. Just what I want to want to build the team around, but Russell Wilson right there too. I'm not definitely not criticizing that pick either. Ah, God. All right. Now I got to make a, I'm going to make a mistake probably. So uh, let's see here. I'm taking a receiver here and I am between, there is probably four or five guys that I could draft here and they're all very skilled players. Uh, I guess I'm going to pair, I know this is kind of another, I would say, older receiver kind of at the end of his prime, maybe maybe still in it. Kind of had a down season last year. This is going to tarnish uh, what people think about him, but it's Odell Beckham Jr. I still think he's the top five receiver in the league. I think he's really talented. Uh, this is a guy that can make spectacular catches. Another guy that can, he can take a slant to the house. I think uh, he's kind of a, for me, he's kind of a Tyreek Hill light. I know he's not as fast, but he's that guy that can take a lot of different plays to the house. He's kind of a I hate to say it just after I did. He's kind of a Swiss Army knife for me at uh, receiver. I think he's really well-rounded, and I think he is getting more hate than he deserves just for a little down season. He was injured. He had Baker playing like crap. Uh, he's played with Eli Manning his whole career, so that definitely affects his uh, uh, his stats, but he was still unbelievable there. And there's some injury risk there, but I'm really – I've kind of just factored that out for this. It's a seven-on-seven seven league. I'm, I'm kind of playing with everybody at full strength. That's That's kind of how I view this. So I think it's a good pick there. Yeah, I mean, when you take the league by storm like he did, you're going to have some high expectations. And uh, I think people tend to give him a little bit too much crap, like you said, Chris. I mean, he actually did have a decent season last year. Considering, terrible. Uh, yeah, considering Baker Mayfield was just awful. But uh, if you're talking pure talent here, he's one of the best athletes, one of the best players in this draft. So I, I really like that pick. Yeah, and I want to get my second outside receiver, and I'm hoping uh, – there's a couple different guys that really want to fall to me uh, to have on my third receiver. Um don't take him, Drew. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I'm 
I'm kind of regrouping here because Odell was actually going to be the guy that I was thinking about taking. So um, I was debating him and a couple other guys, but Odell was probably the guy that I was going to get just because um, I like Baker Mayfield. Obviously, I'm decked out of my Browns gear right now. Um, And I think he's just due. I I just look at his maturity um, during the offseason. I feel like Baker's going to have a really good year. and I think Odell is going to definitely reap the benefits of that. Um, Obviously, injuries are always concerned with Beckham Jr., but – I don't know. I, I just like the – they had a bunch of drama. Pretty much everything that went wrong, that could have went wrong, went wrong for Cleveland last year. And I think Odell, with that new coaching staff, with a better quarterback, he could be really good. And they, they also added Austin Hooper, too, who's a really good tight end. So, Yeah, I think um, he is in due for a bounce back year this year. I'm really excited to see if he uh, if he still has what it takes. Yeah, for sure. Good, good pick, Chris. Um, so we'll jump into my next pick here. Um, so I already got two really good receivers. I got a good quarterback. Um, I was so like I said, there I have one quarterback above Lamar Jackson. Um, that's still on the board, but I think I'm gonna wait to get him, and I think I'm gonna get two running backs right here, back to back. Um, just kind of shore up my running back position. Um, and I'm gonna kind of go two kind of contrasting style of backs. So that first one I'm gonna take is Nick Chubb with the Cleveland Browns. Oh wow. Okay. Um, He's just a really good runner. Uh, if you look at rushing yards last year, he was, uh, I think, third or second, actually, second uh, only to Derrick Henry, almost won the rushing title. So I like that. Not a great receiving back, though, which is kind of concerning for me. Like I said earlier, it's a, it's a receiving league, um, which is why, which we can kind of just talk about both my picks in kind of combination here. But I'm, I'm going to take my next pick here before you guys can talk. I'm going to take Alvin Kamara with my next pick as my second mm-hmm. running back. Um, kind of just a contrasting back to Nick Chubb, a really good receiving threat out of the backfield. Um, so I feel like I, with with those two guys, I feel like I have a really good kind of combination with Chubb and Kamara. Yeah, uh, I, I like those picks back to back. You know, Chubb Chubb is a little further down on my list, but it's it's kind of I feel like for this for your situation, trying to get these two paired together, he would definitely move up on my list. Kamara was my third pick. He would have been probably my next running back just based on talent. I probably would have had to take him just because. You know, I felt like he would slide, slid so far. And, you know, he's got that receiving tool. I actually, when I said Barkley was probably the second best receiver, he's definitely not because Kamara definitely is in that role. At, at least the second best running back at, out of the backfield. He's just incredible in that. And then Chubb is just such a complete running back. In ter- you know, he may not have the pass catching tool that everybody, uh, I don't know other people who are projecting him to be a really good pass catcher. And he hasn't been great so far. But as a runner, he's he's definitely one of the best. And I'd be excited to have that duo if I were you. That's a good, that's good pick. Yeah, I like the picks. I'm just uh, Chubb over Ezekiel Elliott, though. I, I, I yeah, that I, was that was something I was uh, a little. Uh, I was I thought that you were going to go with Zeke as your first running yeah. back. Uh, Chubb, are very close. I was thinking about it. Um, that's kind of the two guys I was debating between with that. Um, obviously, Elliott is a little bit not. I mean, he only had. I'm looking at the stats right now. Nick Chubb had 278 reception yards, and Elliott had 420. So it's not like I mean that's a hundred yard difference, but not too uh different um i don't know i just personally i've had nick chubb the last few years on fantasy and this was much more of kind of like a personal bias pick and i like nick chubb a lot i like um, nick chubb a lot too actually i wanted to get him on my team and yeah, ezekiel elliott uh, i'm a michigan fan and he went to ohio state and i'm not a big elliott fan so this was it, it did i, I kind of picked with my heart here and not with my head but elliott's actually above chubb on my board too i just decided not to take him yeah, that's fair yeah he i, I feel like uh you know chubb Probably one of the – he's probably at least a top three or four just pure runner in the league. Uh, I would still take guys like Barkley and probably CMC and Zeke over him. But after that, I think he might be the next guy. And he's – for this offense, you know, he, he can serve as that goal line back too as well. You know, he's really good in the red zone. Uh, uh, he did struggle with Kareem Hunt there a little bit. But, you know, that's kind of uh, a tribute to how good Kareem Hunt is. Honestly, I consider putting Kareem Hunt – I'm not going to draft him, but – I considered having him somewhere on here because I really do think he's a borderline top 10 running back, even though he's the second running back on his own team. Uh, and I don't want to dive too much into Kareem Hunt, but he, I think he's a really good running back, and that's kind of why his touch you saw his touchdown rate go down so much at the end of last season. Yeah, Hunt, Hunt was actually on my board too. So um, yeah, he's, he's, him though, really he's, he's just got so many off-the-field issues, though. It's, it's kind right, of yeah. him. But, uh, yeah, so I think we're – on to Chris with your next yep. pick. Um, yeah, I'm going to go with another receiver. I'm really happy you didn't take this guy. I want this guy. Uh, I think this is uh, quickly developing to the best slot receiver in the NFL. I'm super excited to watch him. I know he's only been in the league for a few years, and this may be a guy that's not even close to the top of your draft board. But I'm going to go with Chris Goblin. I think he's an incredible talent, and I'm 
I'm really excited to get him here. I know uh, I saw Drew's head reaction kind of tells me all I need to know on this pick. Uh, maybe a little bit off your board, but I really think Goblin is the definition of an elite slot receiver. And pairing him with Julio, OBJ, all three of them are, I think it's a really good trio. And it can even move Beckham in the slot too. Goblin is really good outside as well. I really, I, I don't know. I'm really happy with what I have. I wish it was Tyreek Hill instead of Julio, but I, I'm really happy with what I got. Yeah, that's a that's a really solid pick. Godwin was arguably last year's breakout star. Uh, Bruce Arians' yeah, offense is just lethal, man, out there in Tampa Bay. So that's a really exciting player to watch. Yeah, I mean, I don't like I don't know how you guys felt when you were making your boards, but it's definitely like there's a lot of guys like five to like twenty where you can kind of just like they're right. interchangeable, specifically with wide receiver and running back. So Godwin, I had him a little bit higher on my board, and he dropped a little bit, but he was still, I think, top 15, I think, here. But I still have a few guys ahead of him that are still up there. Um, but I'd make the argument that Godwin is even the best receiver on his team. Like, I think he is the best receiver. I think he definitely is the best receiver on his team. especially over Mike Evans? Yeah, I'm taking him over Ooh. Evans. I think, I think he's more well-rounded. See, Evans, I think, is a little, I think he's a little overrated. I think he's more of a – he's really elite at – being able to get up, go up and get the jump ball, but I don't think he's that well rounded of a receiver. I don't think he's a no, great. He's, yeah, he, he's not a great route runner. I mean, like you said, it's the hands and he's a great perimeter. Yeah, he's of his great size. hands and great like size as well. But in terms yeah. of running stuff, I think Goblin's more of the Swiss, uh, another Swiss Army. And I know I'm kind of trying to build my receiver core, just guys that Mahomes can just kind of, he can either throw it, you know, because I know Mahomes gets a lot of credit for just chucking it down the field all the time. But he makes really good reads in the intermediate routes, too. He throws a lot of routes to Tyree killed over the middle of the field, and he just takes for big plays and stuff. He makes a lot of those nice throws. And I think Beckham and Godwin are thriving that role while Julio takes the top off of the defense. He's still one of the faster receivers in this league. Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense if you're drafting kind of based on the guys you have here. I guess it's a smart pick. I, I just, in my opinion, there's a few guys that are that are better than him. But that's, yeah, that's just... fair. I mean, that's fair, for sure. Um Ryan, go ahead and with your uh, your next two picks. I'm excited to see what you do here. All right. Well, I know I still need a slot receiver, um, but I can't pass up on this talent. I'm going to go down to Dallas. I'm going to take uh, Amari Cooper as my wide yep. receiver. Three. Yeah, I was uh, I was considering here as well. Uh, uh, in terms of pure talent, I think I would take Cooper over Godwin, but I value Chris Godwin's ability to line up in the slot. And Cooper's more of the outside throw. I know Cooper does venture into the slot a little bit, uh, but I think we'll see C.D. Lamb in that role for the most part. But uh, as, a, as a pure talent perspective, Hopkins, Adams, and Cooper are – that's a tough offense. You, that's just so tough to cover, man. Those three on the outside, incredible. Yeah, I, again, had Cooper a little bit lower than you guys, it sounds like, by the sounds of it. Um, who are you ranking in front of these guys? I'm excited. <laughs> like, I don't know who you're of. Yeah, Cooper's definitely up there in uh, um, my top ten. Again, it's kind of my personal bias, and these like the I feel like this Cooper range. There's a lot of guys that are kind of interchangeable. So like, I mean, you guys are all making good points, and I feel like he could definitely move up on my board just by the points you guys are making. But um, my personal bias, so it feels like Cooper, like he's he's either like really good or he, he's just super inconsistent in my opinion. Yeah, he's so, inconsistent, like, but his there's no denying his talent. And yeah, the, some yeah. injuries. Last year. He was very consistent the start of last season. You have to remember that when he wasn't injured, he was very consistent. And he honestly was just consistently like it was tough for him. He was basically just a decoy. He was just consistently like bad in terms of stats at the end of last year. But there's no denying he's easily a top ten receiver and a guy I would have really liked to take him as my fourth receiver. Yeah, he was. I mean, he was still top ten in reception yards last year. Um, even though, like you said, he kind of struggled there down the stretch. But I don't know. Uh, he could have a really big year because they finally got Jason Garrett out of the building and the Cowboys are going to like revamped. But um, I don't know me personally, of course, it's probably my personal bias. I'm a little, I, I'm a little hesitant on Cooper, but he's still a good player and the talents there and it, having him as your third receiver is, is a really good, really good ride. Yeah. So uh, my next pick here, hmm, I want to go receiver again, but I don't know. Maybe I should get a running back too. I don't know. Um, all right, this is going to come as a bit of a surprise, but one of the best uh, pass-catching running backs in the league. I'm going to go Austin Eckler here. Oh, wow. Yeah, he wasn't even on my board, but that's actually a pretty good pick there. Uh, pairing him with McCaffrey is going to make your backfield deadly. I know in Madden, I really like to run a two-running back set, uh, system. Some, it's like my secondary formation. Where I run the two-running back formation or like system, so I always have two really good pass-catching backs. So I kind of am envisioning that to pair around Lamar Jackson. Your, your, kind of, your backfield in that case would be just incredible. And 
you'd have a lot of different things you could do with those three. I, I like that pick a lot, actually, for your team. Yeah, he was almost he almost had a thousand receptions like yards last year. He finished with nine ninety three, which is second best in one running back. So a really good elite receiving option there out of the backfield. Um, he was on my board. I think he was twelfth. If I'm reading, yeah, he was twelfth. Um, he was because I kind of had like the top tier and I had like a second tier, and he was like on the border of like my third tier, my second tier. Um, but still a really good quarter or quarterback. We're still a really good running back. Um, and he actually kind of moved up my board a little bit as I was doing research because uh, Melvin Gordon's finally gone out of LA. So I think he could have a really big year this year. Again, a little bit of quarterback concerns there with Tyrod and Justin Herbert, but he's still probably gonna have a really good season. Yeah, um, I, I definitely like that pick a lot. And uh, I guess I'll kind of jump into my next, the thoughts of my next pick. Uh, I'm probably gonna, I think I'm gonna go wide receiver here. I would, there's a guy I'm going to take as my running back, too, but I don't have to. I can take him with my last pick because you guys already took all your running backs. So I'm going to kind of try to play the game of stealing a rod receiver from somebody else. And this is a really tough decision, man. Uh, there is This is kind of the grouping of receivers where I just have absolutely no idea to take here. And I was kind of just trashing on Mike Evans. He was He's in this discussion. Uh, um, he's definitely still a top 10 receiver, in my opinion, but I, I'm having a tough time here. And I'm thinking about going a little bit further down my board to a guy that – he underwhelmed last season. No, no, I'm I'm changing on the fly here. I'm going with Travis Kelsey. I'm going to take the first tight end off the board. And uh, I almost forgot about him because he was kind of lower on my board just because I added him really late in there. Uh, I want a guy over the middle of the field, another guy that can kind of just catch the curl route, get us 10 yards, get us another first down, move the chains. And there's some receivers I'm – I was really debating between him and I even almost took another tight end, but th this was a tough pick here. I like Kelsey, He's my fourth receiver, you could say. Yeah, I was wondering who was going to take the first tight end. I, I thought it would be Drew, honestly. So that that came as a surprise to me. But uh, great receiving tight end. Uh, like you said, he runs the middle of the field really well. So I actually really like that pick, Chris. So that, Thank was, you. that was a good pick. Yeah, good pick. Um, I'm not going to tease who I'm going to take here, but I was just say, um, Ryan kind of alluded it there. I probably was going to be the first one to take a tight end off the board. And I'm, let's just say I'm very happy you took Kelsey and not the other oh, guy. Oh, I think I know who you're going to go with. Um, but, yeah, Kelsey's a really good player. A lot of people kind of make the argument that he's really more of a wide receiver anyway than a tight end um, because he doesn't really block all too much. But uh, he still got 12,000 yards last year, five touchdowns, a really good threat. We've honestly seen it, we've obviously seen it work with Petra Holmes the last few years. So teaming them Man. up. Even that chemistry going, good option. Yeah, right. Uh, that was definitely in consideration as well with the other tight end that I think you're going to take is that Mahomes and Kelsey have that background of having a great connection. And, you know, Kelsey, maybe he isn't the most flashy tight end. You know, he's not the he's not the most exciting guy out there. But if you look at it just from, like, even a fantasy perspective, he's been the tight end one for the last, I think, what, three or four years. And people just keep doubting, like, well, well should we take this guy in front of him? Should we take Gronk in front of him? Should we take Kittle? Should we take Andrews? Now even some people are saying that. No, you shouldn't, honestly. Travis Kelsey's been the best – tight end in the NFL for the last five seasons. And I don't really think there's any any debate, any sliver of a debate with how good he's been as just a receiver. And yeah, not as great of a blocker, but I'm kind of building my team to just kind of air it out in general. And Kelsey, I think he's probably the best receiving tight end in the league. Yeah, good pick, good pick. Um, so I'll just jump into my next pick here. Um, I kind of teased it there. Um, in my opinion, the best pure tight end in the league, when you turn, when you take in, in terms of blocking, uh, with Nick Chubb running, I'm going to need some at least a little bit of decent block. I know we're talking about offensive line, but I'm going to need some decent blocking. Um, personally, one of my favorite players in the league, I kind of jumped on the wagon two years ago, and now everybody loves him, so I'm, I'm really happy about that. So I'm going George Kittle here with my as my wife. That's a good pick. pick. That's a really good pick, man. Uh, I really debated this tough. It was literally just because Mahomes is on my team, so I took Kelsey over him. I love Kittle. He's he's definitely one of my favorite players in the league. The people's tight end for sure. He's a see. This is what I was kind of alluding to is like Kittle is much more fun to watch for me. I I enjoy watching him a lot more than Kelsey. And I think Kelsey is fun to watch, but Kittle is just he's electric with the ball. I remember that play he had where he took what well, I think it was a five yard fourth down against the uh, it was like a five yard out against the Saints, and he trucked like three dudes all the way down to, like, the 25-yard line. That That's kind of plays that I don't think a guy like Kelsey would be making on a regular basis. But Kittle, also the best run-blocking tight end in the league as well. He's just incredible. Yeah, yeah like Chris said, he's the uh, total package, really fun to watch. And uh, Iowa, man, they just produce those tight ends like crazy. I'm hoping TJ Hawkinson can develop into something. But, uh, yeah, nice pick, Drew. Yeah, I, I love Kittle. I'm glad you mentioned, Chris, that one play that he had where he trucked like five people. I mean, he's just a fun player to watch. He seems like just a genuinely just really nice guy and great dude. Uh, I think right. 
really helped my locker room um, and a great leader. So really happy to get him there. That's um, a good pick. So with my next pick here, I think I got two picks left. I need a, a backup quarterback, and I need another wide receiver. Um, and you got – I mean, Ryan, you need one more receiver. But, Chris, you're all set. And there's more than one receiver that I like that's still on the board. Uh, but when I look at my quarterbacks, there's really – like there's one guy that's still on there. I'm surprised he's still here. Um, and then there's a bit of a drop-off. So uh, with my next pick, I'm going to take quarterback Deshaun Watson of the Houston Texans. Yep, and I, I kind of debated him at this pick as well. Um, with my next pick, you're going to see I'm also going to take a quarterback. No, spoiler alert, but uh, it's going to be a little bit of a different strategy for me um, at quarterback. But, you know, Watson, definitely uh, kind of a guy that would be waiting in the wings on this team after, you know, Wilson. He's getting up there in age a little bit. You know, he's kind of, uh, I think he's around 30. And Watson's only 24, 25, something like that. Uh, just an incredible player. Makes incredible plays with his legs. Uh, plays that even Lamar Jackson can't make inside the pocket with that pocket awareness. I think I talked about it a little bit when we were actually doing our quarterback breakdown, but he's just incredible at uh, avoiding sacks with that awful offensive line he deals with. And without Hopkins, I'm ex I still think he's going to be a really good quarterback. I don't think it was just because of Hopkins. Yeah, I'm actually not as high as him, uh, on him as you guys are. I actually think he's a little bit overrated. Uh, he turns the ball really? Really quite. I yeah, love one. <laughs> I mean, I love the guy. He's great at looting, like you said, but he, do, he does turn the ball over quite frequently, and he hasn't really won anything meaningful. I mean, granted, he has had a horrible offensive line and uh, not a great team around him, but uh, for his coach to say he's the Michael Jordan of the you know the draft, I, I've kind of expected a little bit more out of him. So, I mean, yeah, that's fair. I, I, that is definitely a knock on him is that they haven't really been able to win a ton with him. I know he had that comeback win against the Bills, but I was really almost Josh Allen shooting himself in the foot rather than Watson just crazy. He only, he did make that crazy play that you got to factor in. We got sandwiched between two Bills and then was somehow able to get that pass off. That was – yeah, that's a play even Lamar Jackson can't make or Mahomes. I, I will, I'm fully aware of that. You know, Watson, incredible at breaking sacks, incredible at moving around. He makes a lot of – impromptu plays happen and uh, I would be very excited to have him as my quarterback too I'm sad you took him he had that I mean he also had that one really sweet rushing touchdown too where he like eluded a yep. bunch of players in the playoff game yep. and, the Bills. Yep. and the Bills were a good defense but I mean of course you can't just grab a quarterback based on one game um but I just look at the rest of these guys they all have either injury concerns or talent concerns in my opinion at least and I feel like Watson um it's definitely worrisome when your wide receiver one goes from uh Hopkins to probably Brandon Cooks. I mean, that doesn't make me feel confident in this pick, but um, I feel like the talent wins out with Watson. So hopefully, me too. I think he's going to still put up similar stats and he's going to spread the ball to all his receivers. And even I know David Johnson is getting up there in age and he's not the same explosive athlete, but he's still a really good pass catching running back. Definitely a top five in that category, I'd say. And that's that's a guy I think Watson's going to fall in love with this year. And he's going to, he's at least going to throw him 50 passes. He's at least going to complete 50 passes to him. And Johnson can make some things happen in the receiving game. So. I think that'll make up for uh, the kind of Hopkins. I think it's going to be a group effort to get Watson's stats to be very similar. And I think he's going to run a little more this year too. So, uh, and he, he avoids the big hit more often than not as well. I also like dual threat quarterbacks too. And I feel like with Wilson and Watson, I can run some interesting packages there. So, yeah. Yeah, that's for sure. Uh, I'm going to jump into my next pick. And, you know, I was definitely going to take Watson with my next pick. So that you stole him from me there, you jerk. But uh, this guy, I'm actually going to go off my board a little bit here. And this is a guy that I'm kind of repping out right now in terms of uh, just uh, got the Cardinals shirt right here. Uh, this guy, I'm definitely, like I said, going off my board. There's three quarterbacks I already have in front of this guy. But I'm going to – this is kind of a waiting in the wings opportunity after Mahomes. And this is a guy that I think is going to be a top five quarterback. In the league. It's Kyler Murray for me. And definitely not in that category right now. There's definitely plenty of guys in front of him. But I'm looking for the future of my quarterback too here. And, and this is uh, another – Another guy that's very mobile, can run around, hyper accurate with the football. I don't think he gets enough credit for that with that bad offensive line. Everyone's like, oh, he's just a pure scramble. But no, he's super accurate with the football, makes really good reads. And he was a little disappointing in the touchdown department as a rookie season. But in terms of just how he looked on the field, he looked incredible. Made a lot of highlight plays with his, with his arm and legs. Made a lot of good decisions. And I'm excited to see what he can do with Hopkins and co. this year. Yeah, I, I don't got much to say because uh, this is a complete homer pick, but I will say he's yeah, it is. It he's is. a very promising quarterback. I will say that. Yeah, I didn't really know who to take. I, I didn't want any. I felt like all those guys in front of him are kind of boring quarterbacks in terms of just I, they don't really excite me as a backup quarterback. So I went with Murray because I could throw him out there for a few plays, uh, and he could he could make some things happen with his legs. I am very excited to see what his development is. And if you looked at this list in a couple years, I think he would be 
a little happier with my quarterback two selection. But I don't think I'm going to win this draft anyway, so I went with my heart. Yeah, I got I got six guys in front of him on my list, but um, yeah, I'm, still, I'm still high on Murray. Um, and if he becomes if he has like a top five, top six level season as a quarterback this year, it definitely would not surprise me. So no, I overall, think he's, I think he's a really good player. Overall, I think that's a really good pick um, because he does have the potential to be really good. But of course, he does have the potential to just kind of blow up in flames too. But um, because it is he had he had some issues last year, and it'll be interesting to see if he can kind of. Uh, can I take that next step? A lot of people are predicting him to be like Lamar Jackson was, and like maybe he's an MVP candidate this year. So I guess I well, think he's a dark horse for the MVP for sure. I, I think he could have a really good passing season. I don't think the Cardinals. The Cardinals are going to be interesting this year. Just kind of t- touching on them. I'm excited to talk about that when we actually get into the NFC West breakdown. But I think the Cardinals are going to be a team to watch for a, a dark horse playoff contender. I'm excited to watch this offense work. Murray definitely has a lot of great options. He's got Drake. He's yeah, got sure. uh, Kirk Fitzgerald. Hopkins, obviously, now. So, well, we'll have to kind of wait and see. But yeah, it's a wait and see. Why is my back there? Yeah. So, all right, Ryan, close out your draft here with a couple picks. All right. uh, I'm going to go. Well, I need a backup quarterback. So, I'm going to go to Dallas again. Guy gets a lot of hate sometimes, but uh, actually, one of the best deep ball passers in the league and uh, sort of an effective dual threat, especially towards the red zone. I'm going to take Dak Prescott as my backup. Yeah, this was the next guy. On my uh, the next guy I was considering after Kyler, and maybe even a little more, uh, maybe even a better pick in terms of just me being a homer. And I love Murray; he's my favorite player. So I, it was kind of like uh, Drew with Nick Chubb. Maybe not the best player available, but a guy that's very good, respectable, and a guy that you just are a big fan of. So that was kind of why I went with Murray there over Dak. Dak's a very good quarterback as well. Another guy I'd be very excited to have as my backup. Yeah, I, I don't. I mean, we've talked about this. We talked about it when we did the QB rankings, and we talked about when we did the NFC East uh, review a, a few days ago. Um, I don't really get the whole Dak hate. I mean, I thought he was a good player last year. I think he's going to improve a lot this year. Kind of like what I said with Amari Cooper, um, getting Jason Garrett out of the building. I think he's really going to help him out this year. Um, he was one of the best quarterbacks in the league last year. Kind of underrated. He kind of fell apart there a little bit down the stretch, um, but I think he could have a really big year. He was he was one of those guys I had ahead of Kyler. Um, so, yeah, for a backup quarterback, a pretty good pick. Pretty good pick, Ryan. Thanks. So, for my uh, last pick of the draft, I need a slot receiver. I'm going to go a little bit underrated here. This guy should be getting some more attention. Uh, one of the best slot receivers in the league last year. I'm going to go with Cooper Cup. Wow, that's an interesting pick for sure. I like Cooper Cup a lot as well. He's actually on my dynasty team. Uh, I'm pretty loaded in receiver in that, but we're not talking about that that much. Uh you know, Cup is just a he, – he's another well-rounded slot receiver and a guy that uh, fits your team really well, a possession receiver under the field. I was wondering if you were going to go with him or there's another uh, slot receiver I really like as well that was – he was kind of like lower on my list, but another guy that uh, I thought you were going to go with there. And I, you know, that's a, it's definitely a good pick. I, I'm a big fan of Cup myself. A lot of people are projecting him to kind of fall off. You know, he's actually already 27. It doesn't feel like he's been in the league that long, but he came in as old as a rookie – People are kind of expecting him to fall off. I don't see it quite as much. And I, I am definitely higher on him than most people. That's a good pick. He was quite a bit lower on my board. Um, but, again, I kind of go back to how with these receivers, you can kind of like they're like 5 through 25. It's pretty interchangeable. So um, he there's injury concerns with him for sure, but there's injury concerns with a lot of these guys. Um, he's a good slot player. Um, I'm pretty kind of typing away here because I'm trying to figure out who I want to take with my last pick because that's not who I expected you were going to take. So now I'm trying to figure out who I'm going to do go with. But um, a guy I definitely like too a lot. Um, kind of going back, I, I hate just keep talking about my fantasy team, but I have Cooper Cup a lot on my fantasy team, and he's a, he usually is pretty good. So yeah, yeah, that's definitely true. He's a he's a well-rounded slot receiver for sure. Definitely a, a big addition. I love you have Amari Cooper and then Cooper Cup. That's kind of cool as well. Got that connection. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, I got to take my running back, too, and there's a lot of guys. Uh, I'll just go ahead and say I was considering Derrick Henry here to pair with Saquon Barkley. I feel like he's the best fit for this team, you know, a guy that could just kind of just plow through the goal line, but I'm not going to take him here. There's no way that I got to pass. I can't pass up on Ezekiel Elliott. That's what I'm going to go with here, and I feel like he's just too talented to leave on the board. I know, like I said, Derrick Henry may be a better fit for my team, but uh, Saquon and Zeke backfield, two really well-rounded backs, two guys that can catch passes. You guys like a run downhill. I'm really happy about that. Yeah, one of the strongest running backs in the league. Uh, 
that you're, I mean, whoever's playing you is going to have a tough time bringing down Barkley and Elliott. I mean, they can just right. run through tackles, man. Good pick. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe maybe not as good of a – I feel like you guys did a better job kind of scheming up your running backs in terms of what they do together. But in terms of just pure talent, I really like my running back room because Zeke is the more durable player. You know, he's, I don't think he's missed a single game besides the suspension. And Barkley, he had that injury last year, so that's kind of insurance in terms of Barkley. Barkley would definitely be my starter in terms of who I think is the more talented player. But Zeke, no slouch in the – talent department, but durability is probably his best best trade, I'd say, but that's no that's no small feat as a running back. Being durable is big. Yeah, I think that's a really good pick, Chris. Um, like I said, when I took Nick Chubb, I was debating between him, and then you mentioned it there too, Derek Henry. I was also thinking about taking him as well. I um, was really close. Cool, I don't want to dive too deep into Henry, but uh, there are some concerns if he can just kind of keep it up like he did last year. And the the Texans did lose, or the Texans, the Titans lost some stuff on the offensive line as well. So yeah, they did. Um, yeah, that was why I didn't take him because I yeah. think he had a really good year last year. But I do think he's a little bit overrated as a as a running back. I think he's really physical, but I don't think he's a crazy elusive guy. He's not a pass catcher at all. I think he's going to regress a little bit this year, and that's why. I, I would not recommend taking him in the first round of your fantasy draft. I know, again, we've talked about fantasy more than we probably should have for this. That's the guy I'm out on this year in terms of fantasy. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, he only had 206 reception yards last year, which is not yeah. not very good. And were, I think two of those were on really long screens as well. So he's he only had, I think, 19 receptions all last season. So that's really nothing special. Um, all right, so I guess I'll finish the draft up here with the final pick of the draft. Um, I need, a, I need another receiver, um, and I kind of got – there's, I'd say, three guys that I'm looking at here trying to decide between. Um, but we're going to bring up fantasy one more time because every fantasy team I've ever been a part of, uh, I'm, a, I'm a big Lions fan. I know you can't really tell by the ah, stuff I'm wearing. <laughs> but um, you you always got to take a lion whenever you do fantasy football, and this is not not too different. So I got to go with the lion here, uh, wide receiver, one of the best receivers in the game. I think if Stafford stays healthy all year, he could be like a, one of the top three guys. Um, taking Kenny G, Kenny Galladay, the Detroit Lions, my final pick. Yeah, that's an interesting pick. Uh, I had him definitely on my list. He was number eleven on my list. I would definitely do some rearranging after that, so he's probably ahead of that. And he was in he was in the discussion for my uh, third receiver, but I went with Godwin over him just because he's that slot receiver threat. But God, Kenny G is in a very similar tier to Godwin for me. I think they're both to actually top ten receivers. I'm higher on both of them than some other people. I actually think uh, Godwin's a little bit better, but those were like very very close in terms of who I went with at my wide receiver three. So good pick there. Kind of got yeah, a Gal Galladay came in with some uh, high expectations out of Northern Illinois, and he man, he has not disappointed. Uh, it's no, very exciting, especially all. especially as a Lions fan. I know we're all. I think Chris is a Lions fan, even though he loves the Cardinals. Oh but, uh, gosh, <laughs> as right. yeah, fans, I am, but it sucks. <laughs> as Lions fans, someone like Kenny G kind of gives us a little bit of hope. Uh, he's a great player, great red zone target. I really like the picture. Thank yeah. yeah, I mean. I look at the stats, too, when I was doing some research. It really surprised me how good he was last year. I mean, he had 11 touchdowns, which I believe was top in, uh, for wide receivers hey, in the league. league. And, and he was playing with bad quarterbacks for half the season. Yeah. Too. I mean, he had, what, so Jeff Yeah. David and, Blau. Yeah. And oh, uh, he, he had the six most reception yards, too, with, at 1190, which was really, really good. Really Really um, and if you think about it, if Stafford stays healthy this year, I think he could be one of the best receivers in the game, like I said. That's definitely a good pick. Uh, do we want to go over all our teams now? Sure. How about uh, – I guess I'll go first since I'm closest to the left. Uh, so I got – in my opinion, I'm really happy with my quarterbacks. I got two of the top three guys on my board. Uh, running backs, I, I've schemed well, I feel like. I got Nick Chubb, who's a downhill runner, and Kamara, who's an elite receiving back, one of the best receiver or uh, running backs in the game. Definitely some injury concerns with him a little bit, but really good. And then my receiving core, uh, I got my top two guys on my board and Thomas and Hill, which I'm really happy about. I did not think Hill was going to fall to me, and I'm really happy. I know Chris is just eating up inside. Uh, <laughs> and then I wanted George Kittle a lot too. Like I said, one of my favorite players in the league and Kenny Galladay. I think he's he's due for a really big year this year, and I'm really looking forward to that. So I'm really – overall, yeah. we did an NBA draft, and I was kind of not super happy with my team, how it turned out. And this team, I'm really happy how it turned out. Yeah, I'm almost the exact opposite of you. I, I like my team more than I thought I was going to. You know, I, I said I had losses already. I think it's going to be pretty close. I do like my team. 
but it's definitely not as good as uh, the last team. I had the second pick in both drafts, and last time I was super excited to have it because I got LeBron. This time I did get Mahomes, which is the first player off my board, but I'm not as excited to have this team. So I do have Mahomes, Tyler Murray, which I like my quarterback room, even though Murray may be a little bit of a reach there, stretch, just kind of projecting a break out there. But then Saquon and Zeke, I think, are two and three in terms of a pure talent running back. So I like that a lot. And then I have Julio. OBJ, Chris Godwin, and Travis Kelsey, which I think is an excellent receiving core that kind of complements each other nicely. Maybe not as many deep threats for Mahomes as I would have liked because Tyreek Hill would have made that awesome because I would have gotten him and Julio, which would have felt a lot better, and maybe even gotten OBJ as well. Would have felt really nice, but I'm, I'm overall happy with what I have. Yeah, so uh, my NBA draft was – I don't know what I was on because I fell <laughs> on LeBron and uh... – I took Kyle Corver, so I, I really wanted to kind of redeem myself here. I felt like I did a decent job. Um, but so this is like, so my impression is this is a seven on seven, right? So we're not running the ball. It's going to be passing only, right? That was kind of the idea we're coming into this. I, I think there is some handoffs, but yeah, I would say it's generally more passing. Okay. Well, I'm a little like, I, I like my quarterback room. I'm a little concerned about Lamar being a pocket passer. If he, you know, if it's truly, truly seven on seven, but uh Great athlete. I like my running backs. Eckler's not going to do a, running, a lot of running between the tackles, but he's one of the best pass catchers out of the backfield. Uh, my wide receiver room is pretty loaded. Uh, Cooper Cup's not the best slot receiver. I really, really like Tyree Kill there, but, you know, you can't win them all. So, But overall, I think it was a pretty decent draft for, for all of us, and I think this is a lot closer than you think, Chris. I think we're pretty even in terms of – Yeah, I think we are. I actually do think we are pretty even. I and I'm going to name a couple guys, just kind of start, like – some players that we didn't draft or whatever. I'm going to name a couple of guys that I was like, I thought you were going to go ahead and take as your slot receiver over a cup. I thought maybe you'd take Adam Thielen. They're very close to me. But well, the guy I really thought you were taking, I almost took him as well as my wide receiver for is Juju Smith Schuster. I know he didn't have a great season, but in the slot, he's one of the best receivers in the league. I know outside, not great, but as a slot receiver, he's one of the best in the league. So I was, I thought you were going to go ahead and take him. And Diggs even was another guy I was, I was uh, sure, I wasn't sure if you were going to take him or not. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not high on Diggs, but uh, I am very high on Thielen. Uh, Juju really disappointed me last year. I had him on Aiden. Thielen, so yep. He pissed me off, so I wasn't going to draft him. But, uh, yeah, you're right. I probably should have taken Adam Thielen over uh, uh, Cup, but I don't know. I like Cups. I mean, he's just a, he's just solid all around. He kind of can yeah, depend he on is. him. So. Yeah, he's also I, a nice run down threat, too. I was also surprised that you didn't take Adam Thielen because that was one that – Pretty much him and Galve were the two guys I was debating between with my last pick there. So um, Juju to me though, he's just overrated. I feel like a little uh, bit. I, like, yeah, I don't. I don't think he's like a true one. But in the slot, I really like him. I think this year he's gonna have a really uh, he's gonna have a bounce back uh, season as an NFL it's, player. It's like, Roethlisberger to stay healthy for sure. But yeah, I mean, I don't know. He's like the big if. too. So and he he's yeah. not on the TB12 method. So it's a little concerning there with Roethlisberger. Oh yeah. Um, biggest snub was probably Mike Evans. I think he should have been drafted. I just, I'm not really a big Mike Evans fan. I, I know he's really good at catching the jump ball, like I said, but I think he's getting overtaken as the one in Tampa Bay. Another guy I had pretty high on my list was Allen Robinson. Uh, another guy that can kind of go up and grab the ball, but bad quarterback play is kind of, I didn't want to take a, I didn't really want to take a bear. So that's kind of why I didn't go with him. <laughs> And yeah, then I had DJ Moore on my list, too, in terms of just a, a young gun guy. I thought about drafting him, but I didn't really know where he'd fit my team. Uh, very young, still kind of uh, developing. I think he's going to break out this year, but that's kind of why I didn't take him because he wasn't at – his stats weren't as good as I thought when I actually looked at him. Allen Robinson's way down on my board. Like, I really? – just because just of the quarterback play. I think from a talent perspective, he's really good, but – I think he's a borderline top ten receiver in terms of talent. Yep. Yeah, because that's why yeah, I thought, but, he was just a guy on my list that I thought about. Robert Woods was another guy I considered on my list. You uh, love Robert Woods. You love Robert I'm a Woods. Big, I am a big Robert Woods fan as well. I think he's really talented. Um, it's a guy that can catch an end, can take an end around to the house. Uh, a guy that's – he's not really good at any one thing. He's just a really well-rounded receiver for me and a guy that I would love to – I feel like he'd get a lot of targets in this offense. So that's a guy I definitely was considering. Did you guys have uh, any of the rookie wide receivers on your list? Like, no, I did not. No, Jerry Judy. No, I had them here. lower. I, I had a pretty big list when it came to receivers, and I had like Lamb, Judy, Rugs, but they were like lower. They were actually around where I had Allen Robinson because of the Ooh, man, That's disrespect. Ridiculous. I yeah. really disrespected Allen Robinson because I just don't mean you. 
Trubisky and Foles just do not like evoke any confidence in me. If I'm being honest, like I, I think Allen Robinson has played with bad quarterbacks his whole career, and he's been really excellent. Besides a couple of injuries, I don't think there's much you can you can uh, hate on him for. I think he's a I think he's a more well-rounded receiver than he gets credit for. And he had a monster season a few years ago. I think it was Blake Bortles, and then even last year he was a beast too. And this awful this offense was one of the worst in the league, but he was still he had some really good stats last year. He had over a hundred receptions, or he was really close to it. Um, one receiver I want to talk about here, and uh, we've talked about this a lot already, and I'm just going to get back up with my soapbox here. Devontae Parker, um, I think he's going to have a really wow. big year this year. He was, I, really do. Well, I love Devontae he's, Parker. He's and not even on my list. He was fourth in reception yards last year, had nine oh. total touchdowns, uh, for reception touchdowns, I mean. And, uh, and you look at Ryan Fitzpatrick or Tua, whoever is the quarterback there, I mean, I think they're Good quarterbacks. They're going to put up stats. They might not win a lot of games, but I don't know. I just like Devontae Parker. There's definitely some concerns because he was all – I mean, the talent's always been there, and he always had the potential, and he finally put it together last year. So it'll be interesting to see if that's just a one-hit, one-year wonder kind of thing. But I just – I don't know. I just like him. I just like him a lot. And I know you guys don't like him that much. I like but, him, but I don't think he's uh, – I don't think he's even close to – like a, I wouldn't even – I'd say he's a below average wide receiver one in this league. I know he had a lot of receptions last season, but it took him a full four years to break out. So – I need to see it again before I really buy into Devontae Parker. But if he can do it again this year, I would. He would definitely be worth a mention on my list. As well. Yeah, and I think you benefit when you're down like 35, 14, and the other team's just back there playing pre. Right. I said they might away. not win. I said they might not win, but he's gonna put up stats, and that's when it comes to receive. Like that's where we're drafted based on stats. So. I don't know. Right. I like yeah. What kind of running backs did you guys have up on your list that didn't get drafted? Dalvin Cook. Yeah, Joe he was in. He was tough. Uh, Mixon was on my list. I actually had Miles Sanders pretty high because he's a really good pass catcher, and he's more of the explosive pass catcher. I know that's kind of crazy. Uh, maybe sounds a little crazy, but I really like Miles Sanders. I think he's one of the more talented backs in the league. And, yeah, like based on Drew's reaction, he didn't like that as much as I do. But I, I'm a really big fan of Sanders. I think he's an awesome receiver. No, it's not that I'm not a fan of Sanders. It's just that whenever we have these conversations, you always bring up Robert Woods uh, and Miles Sanders is like the guys you just love. And I'm surprised Terry McLaurin hasn't been brought up in this conversation yet either. So. Honestly, I would I would have loved to get him, but <laughs> on my list, but I love Terry McLaurin too. He's he's a beast. I think I think Miles Sanders is good, um, but I think there's a kind of a he was a little bit lower on my board. I, I we didn't mention too Josh Jacobs too. I think Cook Jacobs. Oh yeah, I didn't even have him on my list, but he should have been. Yeah, Cook, Jacobs, and Mixon, those are the three guys that I really um, almost took to that were kind of below that Henry. I think Henry was clearly the top guy that think, that went undrafted, but Jacobs, Mixon, and Cook, too, were really good. What, what do you guys think about Todd Gurley, of course? I know we'll probably nah, get to uh, nah, his knee no. knee concerns are – it's just too concerning. No, I, mean, I, he's done. Done. I think he's done, honestly. Me, too. I don't think he's that good. I, I, I feel like uh, – they got what's that name? Henderson, the backup now. He's oh, no, no, he's not. He's on Atlanta now. He's oh, basically really? in town. Oh, no, Gurley's on Atlanta now. I don't know if you saw. Oh, him. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he he's basically the only show in town, so he might have one or two more good years in him. But you have to forget he's only twenty five. Feels like he's like forty, man. I feel yeah. like he's forever, but he's only twenty five. But I, I, yeah, I agree. Gurley's done. I think he's got maybe one or two more okay seasons left. But his years of him being awesome are over. That's what I'm saying, though. He might have like, – he was like – he wasn't top 10, but he was close. Um, Melvin Gordon, too, I think, could have maybe a bit of a bounce back here a little bit. Depending yeah, I think on, he, he wasn't on my list. It just depends on how much he shares time with uh, Philip Lindsay, in my opinion. But he could have a good year, too. Oh, there, uh, there's – there's uh, what's his name from Oregon still there, right? The other back with Lindsay. Who's oh, uh, Ray Freeman. Ray Freeman. He's a bust, in my he's opinion. He's dead to me, yeah. yeah. I mean, but he's still there. I mean, they, they have they still have like Devonte Booker too, don't they? They have a pretty crowded Probably. running back. No, uh, Booker Booker isn't there anymore. I don't okay. remember. He's not there. Uh, Freeman's been such a disappointment to me. Like the last two years on fantasy, he's just he's dead to me. If I'm being honest, uh, Aaron yeah, Jones too, uh, and Kenyon Drake a little bit too. I give a little love to those guys. They were on my list. I didn't go drafted. Yeah, I didn't have either one on my list, but I should have had Aaron Jones. He would have actually been in discussion for me because he's a really good pass catching back as well. So that would have been a guy I, I could have considered there as well, but I think Zeke was clearly better. Yep. Um, last thing, I mentioned Stafford. Uh, was a quarterback that I kind of wanted to take, but just didn't because it just didn't fall that way. Were there any quarterbacks that went undrafted that you guys were thinking about taking? Or Carson Wentz was a big one for me. I... 
probably should have gone him in terms of talent over Murray. I'm just, I like Murray more, obviously. But I also like Wentz a lot. He's probably my second favorite quarterback in the league. I'm a really big Wentz fan as well. I was uh, I was thinking about Aaron Rodgers, but he's really regressed these last few years. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I mean, his arm talent alone, though, is just incredible. So, I don't know. I was thinking about it as, like, a backup maybe. That's fair. Yeah, for sure. I uh, Yeah, I didn't. I also – I didn't have him on my list. I thought about it, but I ended up not putting him on the list. Stafford and Breeze were guys that were also on my list, but I didn't really want to take them. That's why I was kind of talking. I was like, I don't know. They're good, but they're kind of, they're kind of boring. So, I went with uh, Murray over them. Was that Brady on anyone's list? I know he wasn't no. on mine. Of course he was. Yeah. Oh, was. True. yeah. So, oh, yeah. Like, oh, I knew he was. Um, yeah. yeah. So, he, he, uh, him and May- Baker Mayfield, I was those might have been my just kind of homer picks because I like both those guys. But, again, from a from just a team-building talent perspective, it makes no sense to take uh, kind of either of those guys. But – uh, Tom Brady might have one more good year in him. Who knows? Uh, Philip Rivers too. He was I had him. No, nope. he was the last guy on my no. list. No, uh, <laughs> no. Um, everyone's not. Everyone's out on him for some reason. Like, I'm he's out. Trying, he's got a man. good team, he's and he could have one more good year in him. I don't know. But no, that's just uh, you know, he's he's going to be very <laughs> average at best. I he was nowhere. I didn't even consider him on my list. <laughs> Uh, okay, just watch Philip uh, Philip Rivers and Devontae Parker are gonna have like the best seasons of all time this year, and you I'll just be laughing in both your guys' faces. Uh, but, not not gonna, you know, I don't even think Devontae Parker is gonna pass a thousand yards this season. If I'm being, I honest. also don't either. I think he's gonna be just under. Yeah. Whatever. I'm done. I'm done doing that. Um, anything else you guys want to do before we kind of close this thing out? No, it was a, it was fun. Uh, I enjoyed this draft as well. I. Not sure if I'm going to win. If I was voting, I'd probably take Drew's team. I do like his rec- – just because of Tyree Kill. I'm so pissed about that. But uh, it was it was definitely an even draft. Uh, a lot of fun. I'm excited to do another one in a couple weeks. Yeah, definitely a lot uh, better result for me. But uh, like yeah, I said, this is, uh, this, is, this is really close. It'd be interesting to see what people think about this. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, it was fun. Yeah, and definitely uh, any of you listening, you can check out our Twitter, uh, which you mentioned at the beginning, which was at uh, Zone Defense Pod, and you can vote on which team you think was the best one for sure. But um, kind of like Ryan said, I'm definitely a lot happier about my team in this draft than I was with yeah, my NBA team. I didn't hate my NBA team, but like I, I like this team. These are, these are like guys that I like, and like I don't like Kevin Durant. So um, yeah, but I, I, we definitely had to do another one of these drafts. These are a lot of fun to do. Definitely my favorite thing that we do on the channel uh, with the podcast. So, um, yeah, I don't know which which one we'll do next, NBA or NFL, but it'll be fun to see what we do. But um, as we said at the beginning, uh, we're the Zone Defense Podcast. Uh, subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Spotify, Twitter, and Instagram. Um, as I we've mentioned a few times, we have a few different episodes up on the channel right now. Uh, we got an NFC East preview, quarterback rankings preview. We did a deep dive into the last dance, Michael Jordan docuseries, as well as the 2010s NBA player draft. Um, so be sure to check those out if you haven't already. Um, and also we'll be back uh, probably in a few days and do an NFC North deep dive as well. So definitely looking forward to that. Like we said, we're big Lions fans, so that's going to be a lot of fun to kind of talk about what we expect they're going to do this year. But uh, that's all for this episode. Thanks for listening. And uh, we're Zone Defense. We'll see you next time. Peace.